Hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com where I teach musicianship skills on the guitar so we can express ourselves more freely. This video is number two in a series that I started about the bebop scale, about improvising uh, melodies over harmony using a little bit of chromaticism so we can treat the chord tones in a certain way that allows us to truly be inside uh, harmonically the pocket, so to speak. This is really a game-changing practice, whether we're interested in jazz or not, but if you are interested in jazz, then this is huge. And the reason that I'm calling this lesson the hard truth about learning to improvise is because what I'm gonna walk you through here in this video is a series of really monotonous, uh, arduous drills, really challenging practice, re repetitive practice exercises that simply do the trick. They are simply effective, and I wouldn't show them to you if they weren't. This is not going to be a popular type of video for my channel. I'm teaching it to you because it's what works, and, and I test everything out for myself, and it's what works for me to have much more accuracy and much more confidence with knowing where I am inside harmony. And we're just going to do it over one chord, and in the next video in this series, we'll, we'll start to change chords and do two chords. Um, but... Let's dive in. This is really awesome stuff um, and I, it makes all the difference in the world. And if you are willing to do this kind of practice for hours and hours, let it add up and little by little be challenged. This is how we get through plateaus. This is how we actually get our playing to sound more inspired and uh, break through that challenge that is so common, which is that we sound like a scale when we're improvising, which it doesn't sound musical when we're improvising, which, okay, we have the right notes, but why doesn't it sound good yet? We need to do step-by-step -step challenging things like this, okay? So let's go into it, and I'm going to walk us through a series of exercises that I call treading water over a chord, treading water in a scale. You can think of it as a back flow instead. It's this idea of keeping playing, keeping going, not drowning, you're still surviving, but you're, and you're playing accurate notes and you're in the right place. We have these little exercises so we can not just play a scale all the way up and down, not just uh, stop and have to think of where we are, but be able to keep going while we process what we want to do next. And of course, you will see what I mean as we do it. If you haven't seen um, level one video for this uh, series and you're interested in this kind of this kind of thing, definitely watch that. That'll set you up for being ready for this. You probably could work through this without seeing that video too, but please watch it. There's a link in the description to the whole series. The prerequisites for this are a few things. We need to know our chord tones. We're gonna do this over B flat dominant seven. So you need to know your chord tones. Just in one position is fine. You can practice this in one place on one chord type for a long time. You could practice, you know, 20 hours of this one position, one chord type, and you're getting the benefit of learning how to do this and applying it in other places will feel quite swift if you can do it in one place. So we're gonna do it right here. Fifth position shifts over to the sixth, sixth position. You wanna know your chord tones on B flat dominant seven, in this case for this lesson, okay? You also wanna know your scale that works over B flat dominant seven, which is B flat mixolydian. This is also the same thing as an E flat major scale. In the cage system, it could be called A form. Okay, but you just need to know that scale form as well. And you need to be able to improvise with both of those over a single chord. You don't have to love it, but you have to be able to do it. Let me make a loop of a simple shell voicing of B flat dominant seven. That's what we're gonna use the whole lesson. Okay, and then can you improvise with just chord tones? I love this. I like to try to make something that I like with the limitation. And also you need to be able to improvise with the mode, with the scale. Don't worry about where you are. If you love it, if it's what you want to sound like yet, because the point of the following exercises is, is to get you to kind of level up that accuracy and loving what you sound like and having more control. So just be able to play with it, however it sounds to you. Could be. Just be able to say, even in time, 
quarter notes, break it up. Don't just play it up and down. Okay. The last prerequisite that we need is we need to know the bebop scale and we need to be able to play that up and down. That is from the level one lesson one of this series. So we need to go one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, passing tone to one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, passing tone to one, and back down. And I want you to be able to play that in time over a chord. Okay, so those are our prerequisites. I'm having trouble saying that word today, but if you need to practice one of those things right now because you don't have it down any of them, even just learning the chord tones, great. You hit a gold mine for practicing. You hit a place that you need that you're challenged that you can get a ton out of your practice time and level up. So don't don't be discouraged. Just say, "Awesome, I found a challenge for myself. I found where I am with this. Let me practice the mixolydian mode and improvising with it, etc." Wherever you're at, awesome. You found where you're at and then go enjoy practicing that. Okay, now we get to go into our exercises and we are going to tread water. So of course I will define what I mean by that with two notes. And we're gonna go through, we're gonna use the structure of the bebop scale through the whole thing. That's why we need to be able to see that really clearly and understand um, what it is. But again, I don't love calling it the bebop scale. It just is such a common name for it. It's just a mixolydian scale with a passing tone between flat seven and one to allow us to land on chord tones on beats. And this is what will give us control over our sound and make us sound like we really know where we are in the harmony. Okay, we wanna have really serious control over this. Then when, when we play for real, we can just let go and see how it shows up and we will practice doing that, of course. So treading water means we did it a little bit in lesson one of this series. But treading water um, is this idea of just kind of being able to go back and forth Okay, I'm on one, seven, one, seven, one, seven, one, or from here, or any chord tone, say I'm on flat seven. Technically, I'm doing what I'm calling treading water right here. So if I was playing, So I used it for a second there and it doesn't sound bad and we're gonna force ourselves to use it even if we don't like the sound of it. We just need to feel like our hands are ready to keep going and accurately keep going in the context of this harmonic exercise, which is we need to play chord tones on beats. One, two, three, four, playing the chord tone, the flat seven on the beat and then the note below it, which happens to be six of the scale on the off beat, or you can go, that's up a note in the scale or so this is the exercise that we're going to do. So what you want to do is tread water with two notes and we're going to do it with two notes, three notes, four notes and five notes. So we're going to repeat this and then we're going to see how it affects our playing. And of course, I wouldn't show it to you in a video if I didn't already discover that it affects my playing in a way that I really find extremely beneficial. So the first step with each of these we're gonna do two notes, three notes, four notes, five notes, but there's four steps inside of each of those. The first step is you tread water as long as you want to. You wanna do it with the backing track in time if you can. If you have that, have a backing track you can use or just do it in time roughly by yourself and think of the right chord tones. You tread water as long as you want with two notes and you, there's two notes on each side while we're using the chord tone, there's two notes with the extra note on one side of it and there's two notes with the extra note on the other side of it. So here's what I've been doing and now off of the root, boom, 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 that's another tread water spot. One, seven, one, seven, one, seven, one, seven, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Very drill-like, right? Now you do that until you're ready and you realize you're gonna go to three. Three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two. Okay, you got that. Now you're gonna go to three, four. Three, four, three, four. And every time, one, two, three, four, the chord tone is on the beat and the non-chord tone is on the off beat or the up beat. So we're playing eighth notes and do as slow of a tempo as you need to, to do that. What's amazing about this is you don't have to beat, it sounds all very advanced, but you, you, don't, you could be practically a beginner and work on this and get a crazy benefit from it because you can just do it real slow and you're focusing on the, the right note at the right time. Okay, I'm treading water from this chord tone to this non-chord tone. Then I'm gonna do it on the other side of it. 
you just do it as long as you can. You don't stop. The step one of each of these is you don't stop until you're ready to move on to the next one. So I'm gonna do it with the with the backing track. I'll start where I was. You do it much slower than this if you need to, of course. Okay? I'm ready to move on to the next. So you have time to think. While you're treading water, you think about where you're going next. And by the way, I like to go, I like to play straight when I'm doing exercises that are not yet musical. It feels weird to swing this. It feels kind of, I don't know, feels off. It feels cheesy almost. I like a very straight feel, so I'll kind of use both. Three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two. Three, four, three, four, three, four, three, four. Okay, going up to the next chord tone. Five, four, five, four, five, four, five, four. Five, six, five, six, five, six, five, six. Seven, six, seven, six, seven, six. This is flat seven to six. Te la, te la, te la, te la, if I use a solfege. Okay, now I'm going the flat seven to the major seven, the passing tone. Any place you want to play that. Oops, I did the wrong thing there. One, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, so you get the point, right? You do that up and you do that down and you switch whenever you're ready. So the point of treading water is you should not have to break it. You should not have to stop. You should not have to think. So do prior to step one here, you just need to try it with not in out of time, map it out. Make sure you understand, okay, that's five to four or whatever. You can think this is the chord tone and this is the non-chord tone, whatever. Okay, now we're gonna do it strictly two times each. One, two, switch. One, two, switch. One, two, switch. One, two, switch. One, two, switch, etc. I'm gonna let me do it without saying that. So we'll see how it sounds. well. This is so potent as an exercise, right? We're not playing music right now. We are practicing, we are exercising, we are working out, we are gaining a skill, we are gaining an awareness we didn't have before. We need to make new neural pathways to then let loose later and use it in music. And it's this is how it works. Okay, so that actually felt really good and sounded really cool. Um, so I'm thinking of, I'm making sure I'm tracking each chord tone and I'm thinking there's two times I have to play off of it with each chord tone. I have to play off to the left side, off to the right side, or however you'd want to describe it. So I'm on flat seven, flat seven the other side, one, one the other side. So I hope already you see how valuable this is if you're someone that's played with chord tones. And I have lessons on just playing with chord tones on the channel, and I'll link to those in the description. But if you just play with chord tones or if you just played with scales, this is the thing that marries the two together in a way that is intentional in time. And so we're seeing, yeah, we're thinking chord tones and we're thinking uh, neighbor tone to be technical. That's an official term, the neighbor tone next to it. Okay, so we did that. Now we're going to do it one time each, one time. So this is quite hard and it just sounds like an awesome scale pattern that's really great to have in our hands. It's basically, this is, we are creating the organic material for original licks. This is where, this is how we can have accurate, amazing licks come out of our playing without it being something we memorized that someone else played. Not that that's bad to do, but then when we do that and we don't know how to manipulate it or play with it or actually improvise with it, it's very stifling. Okay, so one time on off to the left, one time off to the right of the root. If that doesn't make sense when I say left and right, you know what I mean. Just off one, off to one side, off to the other side. There's the three, the three, the five to the four, the five to the six, the flat seven to the six, the flat seven to the seven. I'm not thinking of those labels as I play it because that's a mouthful, but I'm trying to help you understand what we're doing here. So. Okay, think of it as this. You are literally playing this. One, one, three, three, five, five, 
flat seven, flat seven, one, one. If you're playing one, each one, one time on quarter notes, and you're just. Flat seven, flat seven, one, one. Whoops, one, one. Okay, I'll do it with the backing track. cool it's a scale pattern and i could say hey practice this scale pattern i could show you any scale pattern but this is so different because it has become a scale pattern uh, as a side effect of something different which is we're playing chord tones on strong beats and the passing tones the neighbor tones on the other beats mm -hmm. so very powerful that right there if that comes into your playing you have leveled up you have leveled up and guess what step four is in each time we're doing this step four is see how it affects your real improvisation okay now when i do this step i let go of i'll try to do it a little bit on purpose but it's going to feel forced sometimes and it's not going to feel good sometimes you just see how it comes into affecting your playing so here's the playing that is play like you whatever you have going on in your playing So it showed up there and it was nice. I really liked it. So it showed up there. I'm making it show up on purpose because you want to try to incorporate it in, but boy, does it feel controlled to me. It feels so controlled versus I know this scale and I'm just going to play it and something feels off about where notes are landing. Something feels off about where notes are getting emphasized and accented. Well, this takes care of it. Let's move on because we're doing a very didactic, very in-depth uh, lesson here. This is, how, this is how I structure my courses, basically. Like actually practice this hard thing, then this hard thing, then this hard thing, let it add up, okay? So all in one video for you. We are treading water now with three notes. So what are the three notes? Okay. It's just three notes in a row in the scale. So it's gonna be off of this root, but it's gonna be the note off to one side and the note off to the left side. So here's your treading water. Okay. And then you have two versions of it off of each chord tone, just like before, two versions of it. Cause we have one below, one above, and then we have one do, 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 off of the root, but going up to the third. So these are our two treading waters off the root. You do it as long as you want until you're ready to move on. The whole point is chord tones are always on the beat. Now you go to three. Three, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, three, two, three. And then we move on to three, four, five, four, three, four, five, four, three, four, five, four. When you're ready, you go five, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, five, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five is on the beat every time. Five, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, five, six, seven, six, five, six, seven, six, five, six, flat seven specifically. Okay. Now flat seven. I like this one. I'll pick it up there with the backing track. I think I messed up. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna do this as long as I need. There we go. I'm treading water while I think of what's next. This ability to just keep playing is very beneficial and I will talk about that more in a future video more exclusively now one two three two one two three two one two even if you get a little bit of this going one of these segments one of these exercises and you want this ability to feel in time where the chord tones are when improvising and get them on the on the beats that feel good it's a huge level up Three, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. 
here it is. And back down as well. And I might not do the whole thing for you. Because you get the idea. Use the structure of the lesson posted under the video to kind of give you the steps you can practice through. You can also link to my website where that information is posted as a blog post. Okay, I'm not gonna go all the way back down with this. You get the idea. So you can go through as a checklist and do each of these. I'm, we're on treading water with three notes. You do it in the scale as many times as you want, then you do it two times. One, two, and then you move on. One, two, and then. And if it's hard to wrap your head around this, good, great. Do you want the result? Take the time. If it takes you an hour to even figure out what the hell we're trying to do here, then that's your practice time and that's quality. If you want the result, right? If you want the skill, then then wrap your head around it. Take the time it needs. Even if it's a bunch of sessions before you realize how to actually get started on it. Whatever. It's worth it if you want it. And it works. So now we're going to go... I'm going to do this two times each. I'll start off three. This is off five. The other one off five. Off flat seven. The other one starting on flat seven, off the root. The other one off the root. Well, I messed up. Off three. Off three. Off five. Off five. Two times each up and down. Okay. The fun part, I think, is the one time, and then seeing how it play affects our playing. So one time each. That's like such a line, it's such a lick, it's such an exercise, but it just, it guarantees you're playing the, the chord tones on the beat every time, instead of just practicing, which is fun and great and it sounds great, but then that's the only way it's gonna come out in our playing if you only play the, the bebop scale up and down, right? So one time each, let's see if I can do it with the backing track. It's uh, quite difficult. One, two, three, four. spot there is where it takes practice for me. You, of course, would come back down. Oops, I'll do this. Okay, then you play. You just play and see how it affects your playing again. And you just let it come into play. And, and if the other one happens, if whatever, you're just playing now. And I am trying to force it in sometimes, but after I kind of hang for a sec. Come in there for a second. Pretty cool. I think it's pretty darn cool. It really, really helps. And I could, there's no way I could have done that. So kind of fit it in there and just feel so good about it. It's kind of, it's a lick. Every It's a vocabulary thing where I don't have to process every note as it happens because I can trust that the order and the little chunks of them, it's like thinking of words instead of the letters in the words. And you trust that, um, you know, it has the meaning, the pronunciation that you that you know it means, you don't have to spell it out every time. And that's what it's like to, to create these chunks. It's a little bit like, um, again, manufacturing your own little organic li library, laboratory of the ingredients of real licks, your own original real licks. So we have two more steps. 
I'm gonna demonstrate and maybe go through them a little faster, but we're gonna do four notes. So we'll do off the root, but the one note below, and then this note and this. So these four notes. Now, this is a great little moment to say, if you just thought of those four notes, this note is not in the chord, it's not in the key, it's actually considered a bad note to play, that note. That's not a good note. That's the major seven on the dominant seven chord, so it only works as a chromatic note placed in time in the correct place in time, which is on an offbeat. There it is. You just cycle between them. This is actually, I included this in here because it throws off where it is in time and it's not an even, it's kind of creating this almost like polymeter type feeling, but we need to do that too. Here's the four notes off the other side. This collection of four notes and chord tones are still on the beat. And then starting on the three, down one, back up. Uh, starting on the three, up, all the way four notes. Starting on the five, down one note first. Starting on the five, up four notes. See how cool that is? We'll do this. You do as long as you need until... Until you're ready to move on. Ooh, I like this spot spot that works because of where it's placed in time moving on into step two, which is do it twice. So that's twice, then move on, twice, then move on, move on, move on, whoops, yeah, move on. So twice, and then you do the one time. Uh, I'll try it with this, just to add the harmony to it. Okay, gotta do it again. Off the root, off the three, off the three, off the five. Ah, so I messed it up, so I need to practice that. But you heard it, you heard it when I was doing it out of time, so uh, it's quite hard with one time. I'll try it slower. Um, there it is, there it is, uh, so I need to practice that. It's really, really cool sounding. It is, it is really just so accurate for us to play. Now let's see if we can fit it into our playing. Of course I would practice that more and take as much time, like really hours and hours of practice sessions added up, not all at once, but over time on each thing that you need. practicing here is the same kind of targeting ability that is needed to hit like something exactly what you want harmony target a change target chord tone when chords change you're just doing it on one chord so you're practicing abil the ability to be so accurate about where you are on a beat so it'll be easier to 
play the harmony when chords are changing when you have this ability even just on one chord. Okay, we'll rapidly do the five note thing because you know what to practice now and give it all the time it needs. It does, it just pays off. So with five notes, you're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, and you're gonna have those notes. Now it lines up with the beat better, so it's actually a little easier than four. There's your five notes. Chord tone, chord tone, chord tone, you're playing this. Here's my backing track. This is off the three. Three, two, three, four, five, six, five, four, three, two, three, four, five, six. Then off three, four, five, six, seven, six, five, four, three. Five notes each time. One, two, three, four, five notes. Chord tones are on beats. I'm gonna stay here for a bit. Five, flat seven, root, flat seven, five, flat seven, root, flat seven. Now I'll move on. Then you do that two times each and move on. Then you do that one time, so two times. Then move on. Then move on. Then move on. Okay, in insane control. Insane control over the melodic linear, you know, thinking melodically and linearly, but harmonically all at once, all at once. And then of course you do it one time each. show you that alone and be like hey here's a cool scale pattern and here's how it lines up but it's part of a system that is logical it came to that because of the logic of how we're doing the system so instead of showing you more of that let's just see how it shows up in the playing again just playing whatever to kind of get into it and then There's my five notes, so. Isn't that cool? jamming and trying to use it, jamming, trying to use it, jamming, trying to using it. You'll find some amazing little tasty moments that will become a part of your playing. So that's the system for this. It's not the only way to work on this kind of thing. And it's about devising solutions for specific problems that we want to solve in our playing, for specific plateaus we want to bust through, for you know certain skills that we want. There's a lot of ways to work on similar abilities. There's not these it's not, this is not just like an exercise that's passed down. And there are a lot of great exercises that are passed around, but this is something I, you know, created the solution for myself to get a result and it worked. So I'm sharing it with you. Um, and I really find it enjoyable to practice it. Let it take a lot of time. If you know, you want that, enjoy the arduous kind of repetitive process of it and then see how it affects you and give it, you know, over time, over many practice sessions, over many months, see how it affects your playing. If that's something, you know, you're wanting if that's a sound you want, and if that's a, a level of control that you want. So thank you for watching this video. If you need resources to help you, uh, you can get my printable parent scales PDF. So you can practice through scales. If you need to see those, they're all laid out for you. Every type of scale, seven different scales that create all of the modes and just diagrams that are helpful. Basically the same type of diagrams I learned all of my scales from. And also I have a chord tone vocabulary pack. I'm kind of 
mentioning these two at the same time now when I usually do one or the other, but they just go together so well. I'm probably going to put them together eventually, but there's a link to both of those in the description. You can also go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales to get the scales download or soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones to get the chord tones, the arpeggio pack. And that has 12 different chord types, all five positions and shapes and forms of every chord type that you need to be able to improvise over any changes, including jazz changes. So really great stuff to practice. And of course, those are the kind of beginning starting points of working on the very in-depth stuff that we've talked about in this lesson. So thanks for watching. If you're still watching right now, then this is probably something you're really interested in. So I'm excited for you to give it a shot and let it really take some time and have fun practicing it. And of course, let me know how it goes in the comments because I would love to hear from you. And I hope to see you in an another lesson very soon. Take care and happy practicing.